Hello, and welcome to another video discussion of the Dragon Ball Super manga. This is going to be taking place of the chapter 89, which should be releasing sometime around January 19th, 20th, 21st, really depends on your time zone. Um, today we'll be going over this part one interview with Toyotaro. Uh, so expect a part two video uh, later on, which I believe should be on the 9th january 9th yeah is when they're going to be doing a part two to this now i do want to go over this video but <laughs> um tohei and uh bandai have a habit of marking my videos every time i do any type of overview it even got the stream from the uh, dragon ball super uh, card game a couple weeks ago so i will not be allowing audio to go through with this at, at the least but I will go over it later on in the video. First, I'd like to go over to Twitter with Dragon Ball Super Chronicles posting of the interviews. Just kind of go over it kind of roughly, pretty quickly. Uh, just a couple other discussions in between. So, uh, yeah, I will put a link in the video for you guys to go to if you want to go to the website and just watch this yourself. There is a caption, an English caption option there as well for you guys to follow it, so you don't have you don't have to understand Japanese. But anyways, moving forward, it looks like we have a ca an official naming cast, um, unofficially translated, but might as well be official names. The names are for. Oh wait, hold up a sec. I'm probably blocking the view here. Let me uh, let me uh, remove my avatar real quick. There we go, good enough. So it looks like we have a scale, which is from left to right, the kind of nerdy, kind of short looking guy, a uh, little bit stockier maybe is probably what they're going for. Uh, scale with a K. Um, it looks like scale, ruler, compass, chalk, filer. It's all going around the school theme, obviously. Now, usually based on the names of characters, you can kind of tell if they're going to be important later. Um, since these are not official translations, I couldn't tell you if guarantees that they're going to be important later. But these are official tra or, uh, official illustrations. So we got Scale on the left, uh, which based on his naming, I would say he's probably going to be a minor character we'll see in the background for the most part. Which, based on chapter 88, is true. Uh, ruler or Rula. Rula, just because of the little extra on the end there, I would say it's possible she could be kind of a main cast member. Maybe even, uh, maybe even have something to do with Trunks or, or Goten in the in future chapters. Uh, Compass, based on what I saw of him in chapter 88, I would say he was going to be important, but his name is not very unique. So it's just literally as it sounds and what it's based off of, which is a compass. Don't think I've ever heard of anyone being named that. <laughs> and then, of course, we have illustrations of Trunks and Goten. And then we have Chalk or Choke. Uh, once again, a slight difference in the name. So maybe he might be somewhat important. And then we have... So I've seen a couple different iterations of her name being File, Filer... Feyra, Feyra, uh, there, there's a bunch of different names. Either way, based on pronunciation of her name and the translations I've seen, she could very well be somewhat important later, possibly in the next chapter. Um, we do have Mai here on the right, which, weirdly enough, she has a longer skirt than the rest of them. It's very weird. I'm not really sure what the uh, dress code is at this school, but... I mean, everyone has a little bit of a difference in their outfit. It looks like you have the cho they have the choice of sweaters or jackets and whatnot. Uh, the, the dress skirt is very weird on the length, though. Mai is also technically older, um, intellectually wise. She is very much older, so maybe giving her a longer skirt is just showing her mental age over everyone else with the shorter skirts being actually younger. She's also giving a glare at Feyre, Fyra. I really don't know how to pronounce her name specifically, but it's very weird because I'm not really sure why they would draw it like that. This is obviously just an illustration, but they either tore this out of a chapter that's chapters that they already had drawn up, or they did this on purpose. 
So maybe there will be some conflict between Mai and Farah. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, going up the list, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. It looks like explains why how they came up with the color of black for Frieza's transformation in the latest interview. So it looks like, by the way, his new form is black. I guess you could also tell us why you chose that color, right? Says the interviewer. Um, Toyotara says, we were talking about the top level of a credit card. What? <laughs> a credit card? What does a credit card have to do with Frieza in general? <laughs> but in the space, there are black holes, right? It's hard to explain, but the color black has really ominous connotations. Connotations. Uh, so the level above gold is black. I wouldn't work the other way around it's very weird uh it's very weird things to say i mean i did pull up a, a black american express credit card these credit cards are stupidly hard to get i i do see it in in the form of like looking at black frieza i i do see his color pattern in here i mean it's obviously silver and, and gold or not silver and gold but silver and black but he also has purple in his in his official scheme it's just very weird to to look at why would you look at an like an American Express black credit card these credit cards by the way are stupidly hard to get you have to be first of all you have to be invited by American Express to have these cards and you have to uh, I think spend over two hundred thousand dollars in a year even be considered it's these credit cards are stupid <laughs> uh, but moving on so let's see here Toro tells what his favorite scene from the granola arc is oh this ought to be interesting Continuing on with the granola arc, what are your favorite scenes? Honestly, it has to be the scene where Frieza appears. I mean, there's not that many great scenes in the granola arc, personally. The scene where he appears got me so excited that when he trans then when he transformed into Black Frieza, the panel where he lands on the battlefield is the one I wanted to draw the most in the granola arc. Very weird thing to want to draw. I mean, you got your backgrounds, your scared freaking gas over there, and just absolute muscular toning. <laughs> you must really want it to get in that muscle drawing or something, man. Um, okay. I find it interesting that he's like really all about Frieza, but I guess that could be a node to what we'll be seeing in the future. I've, I have a feeling after the whole superhero arc is over, probably in the next couple chapters, um, we 100% will be seeing a, a bunch of Black Frieza. I don't know if we're going to be seeing like him resurrecting his whole army or whatnot, but I have a feeling that this whole school arc, once it ends, everything's going to get real serious with Frieza. Uh, moving on. Discussion on how it came to be, huh? When we met Toriyama and the other staff, we discussed how Goku and Vegeta had been main characters for so long. Yeah, no kidding. It, <laughs> obviously, they've been in the writings and uh, storyboards for this for over the entirety of last year. But they must have known how much they were just overshadowing everything. And the stories were also large and grand scale and intergalactic, so it might be interesting to do something smaller and simpler this time. It's been large-scale and intergalactic since the Tournament of Power and Goku Black arc. So yeah, I would honestly say you've gone way too big and quote-unquote intergalactic for way too long. You need to return to your to your sources when it ye was smaller and simpler back in Dragon Ball time. Um, I've been wanting to do a story with Trunks as the main lead. Very weird that he wants Trunks to be the main lead. I mean, Trunks is the main lead in the future saga, so maybe he just wanted to do his own variation. Before the superhero movie was even being discussed, but I didn't know if it would actually fit into the main story. Uh, I mean, as long as you're escalating in time, there's no way you couldn't have. Very weird things to say. Not really, not really sure how to tackle those. Oop. I clicked on it. I did not want to click on it. Oh no! Okay, Twitter. 
Uh, Toriyama reveals it was Toriyama who pushed the idea of making Trunks a superhero, specifically. It wasn't going to be about superheroes at first, but Toriyama had the idea of making Trunks a superhero. So Trunks being a superhero like Gohan was kind of his thought process. So Toriyotaro just wanted to somehow make Trunks a main character into the story, basically. Turn him into a main character again. But as a spin-off. And Toriyama wanted him to be a superhero, okay. Uh, since Trunks was made a superhero, Goten was also made a superhero in the story. Toriyotaro originally didn't think superhero would suit Trunks' personality, but since Toriyama suggested it, he added it to the story. I mean, it... It doesn't fit Trunks' personality from the Future Saga, and it doesn't necessarily fit his personality from Z at all. So, I, I have to agree. It is kind of weird that they went off on that. I mean, Trunks throughout the entirety of Z did not like Gohan's whole uh, <laughs> superhero idea. He thought it was weird and looked funny when he was a kid. Not to, I mean, it's it's very conflicting how you look at Z and then you look at uh, future Trunks. Because obviously future Trunks looks up to Gohan in every sort of form of the way. But in the current timeline, Kid Trunks doesn't really look at Gohan as much uh, other than Goten's brother. They don't have any type of real relationship in my opinion. So yes, it is very weird that Trunks would want to be a superhero and start this whole thing with being superheroes with Goten. When he never really liked that whole thing. But they basically changed Kid Trunks' whole kind of demeanor. I mean, yes, he, he if you look at Gotenks, their idea of being like a kind of shouting out around, naming attacks and so forth from Z. Yeah, it does actually make sense when you put their two heads together like that. But I always looked at that kind of thing when they've fused was more of a Goten side. I never thought it was mostly a Trunks side. Trunks was always the serious one of the duo. So it is very weird to see his personality change. But he does get older and you change as you get older. So Trunks and Goten became superheroes. Personally, when I think of Trunks' personality, I think of a cool type of person. Yeah. Uh, so I never saw him as someone who would become a hero. Agreed. But since Toriyama suggested it, I figured it would be fine. So, this is just showing that if Toriyama wasn't actually involved as much as he is, um, it is entirely possible we'd have a different story if Toriyotaro was left to his his anything he wanted to do. I have a feeling... I want to say that Toriyama just doesn't want to keep doing everything on his own. So, and he's getting older, obviously. I think he's in like his 70s. So, obviously you have to pass the mantle, but seeing through many interviews, Tori Toriyotaro has had so many weird ideas, but they always end up getting changed by Toriyama, and he's been in charge of this for a while now. So, I'm kind of worried for the future when Toriyama completely steps down, but as of right now, it's fine. So Toriyama still has his his cues, his his input, thankfully. Uh, Toriyotaro wants fans to not confuse future Trunks character with Trunks as they both have different lives altogether. I, I don't even need to read this, but that's what I was literally just saying. Future Trunks and current timeline Trunks are two completely different characters. They grow up differently, they act differently. That's just how it is. Future Trunks is in a desperate timeline where there's Nobody else around him. All of his heroes have fallen. All of everyone that he's looked up to, he it's all on him. And his personality takes that kind of that point. He's desperate. He's scared. He doesn't end up like like Bachita or your stereotypical kind of um, apocalyptic story. He he actually is a terrified kind of kid. Uh, but the current timeline Trunks is kind of like that. He's still afraid of ghosts and whatnot, so I feel like Toyotaro took a little bit too much from him. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it was Toyotaro's idea to put the rom-com moments in the story between Trunks and Mai. Okay. 
In chapter 89, when Mai joins the school, fans can expect there to be more rom-com scenes in the story. I'm fine with romantic comedy, but so far as I've seen, I wouldn't classify it as rom-com. Is that what they're actually calling it? In some romantic comedy moments. Hmm. See, I wouldn't classify what they've shown. Oh, of course, Chrome wants to be slow. We'll see her actually going to school. It skipped over an, an image. That's something Toriyama doesn't do a whole lot. Well, yeah, because Saiyans don't typically do that, but hybrid Saiyans, as we have seen with Koten and Trunks and GT, End of Z, and, and Current, uh, their human side takes more of emotions. And same with Gohan. Hybrid Saiyans are more emotional than, obviously, pure Saiyans, such as Vegeta and Goku. Um... So I'm fine with the rom-com idea. I just don't see it right now. I see Trunks being smitten over Mai excessively as he has been since the Battle of Gods madness, but as a kid. But I'm not seeing Mai having any interest whatsoever. I see a lot of people commenting, oh, she's interested. No, she's really not. I think sh they might force it in later and make it more obvious. But as of right now, sh She's exuding zero interest in him. Absolutely zero. I don't know where people are getting off on these ideas. It's just Trunks being smitten over hers currently. Uh, Toyotaro teases that in Chapter 89 there will be developments involving the disc that appeared at the end of Chapter 88. I would certainly hope so, considering this disc is literally the entire, like, reason that the movie exists. The superhero movie exists. This disc right here is the exact reason Dr. Hedo is able to make Cell Max. So, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm confused by uh, the mention of that other than the obvious. Um, Let's see here. He said there are credit cards with different... Yeah, we, I, we already went over that. Standard, gold, platinum, and black. Black is the top level, while standard is the, the basic. Uh, so, I mean, other than him going over that, standard would be... Standard Frieza, then gold. They skipped over platinum, which is weird, and then went straight to black. Since they skipped platinum and directly went for black, I think the last this it's the last transformation for Frieza. His end might be near. I, I think he's overshadowing a uh, no offense, Dragon Ball Super Chronicles, but I think you're overshadowing way too much. I don't think this is the end of Frieza. They keep bringing Frieza back. Yes, I think they will probably end up killing Frieza again by the end of all of this. Sure, I 100% believe that. Do I believe this is Frieza's final <laughs> form? Well, as the joke proceeds, no. I don't think this is Frieza's final form. I think this is the first stage of his final form, but I honestly 100% believe he's going to have like a full black or he's going to go final form cooler. Um, something is going to be different by the time we lead up to it. It's just not Dragon Ball uh, Z style to not have a final form being shown off later on i i promise you <laughs> what's going to ha my prediction sorry i had to drink some water my prediction for this whole thing with black frieza is that he is going to have his army resurrected there's going to be a whole chapter or saga of basically like muscle tower you're going up to fight the final boss that's what I presume is going to happen right here. And you're basically going to be fighting off Frieza's armies taking over planets or something. Something grand and crazy is going to happen after this whole school arc gets over with. Um, I have a feeling that this Black Frieza form is just the beginning of all of the madness that they're going to be going into. So, uh, moving on. <laughs> If anybody's watched Wednesday, this does look freaking hilarious to me, too. Um, let's see here. True Black is surely coming, though. Yeah, no, 100% it is. There will be a Beyond Black perfected final black. I don't I don't know why they had to go with the black form. Because it's it's just picking off of Rosé. I mean, Goku Black. Black Frieza. I mean, really? You, you couldn't have picked a different color or went with Platinum or something else? Platinum would have been more obvious. So, I don't know. It's really weird. By going by credit card logic, freezes at the top right now. Is there anything above black credit card? 
Uh, also, comparing Frieza with credit cards seems fair to me since he's known as the businessman in the galaxy. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I don't know... I don't know. I... It's very weird, the the choice of color scheme, anyways. I'm personally up for rom-com stuff. Um, I'd like it more if it was set after Superhero. I guarantee you that the manga going forward, we're, going, we're currently... I would say chapter 89 and 90 will be still lead-ups to the Superhero movie. But at the end of chapter 90, they're going to say... Like, basically what happened in a uh, superhero and just do the standard movie bullcrap where they have a literal half page or a whole page or two pages of just explaining what happened in superhero and then they're going to move on. So, we'll either immediately move on from the rom-com slice of life or they'll do some more slice of life after that, after the events, which would be nice. Um, whoa, did this whole thing just get... yeah, it did. Um, this prequel loses its importance when we know how Goten and Trunks contribute versus Cell Max. Not really. Um, even though you focus on the prequel story on these two, it's going to be Piccolo Gohan doing the job against the final boss. Okay. At the end, all this prequel gonna contribute is how Hedo ended up in jail and he possibly came up with creating Heroic. What? I don't, I don't understand what he what he's saying about this. So, <laughs> all this prequel is going to... No, this, this prequel, quote-unquote, is going to contribute the lead-up to the background of Dr. Hedo, to the background of Red Ribbon Army coming out, to the background of things that we haven't seen before. If they're smart, if Toriyo Taro is smart, he's going to be diving into the Jiro madness, the things that we haven't seen before in the past, or that have been happening... Uh, especially with the Red Ribbon base being built up. Um, as far as him be coming up... <laughs> I don't understand. He says contribute is how he Hedo ended up in jail. And he possibly came up with creating Heroic Gamma 1 and 2. It'll 100%. 100%. I'm calling it right now. This is video evidence. Gamma 1 and 2 are based off of Goten and Trunks. Okay? It's obvious. <laughs> Like, I don't know why I have to say this. Gamma 1 and 2 are 100% based off of freaking... <laughs> I'm sorry. There, there's just no way. You cannot tell me. Uh, you cannot tell me. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google this right now. You cannot tell me that with outfits like this that they don't think <laughs> that they're not going to be just gamma 1 and gamma 2 based what's going to happen is i promise you that in the manga goten and trunks are going to save dr hedo from his own creation at one point or another they're not going to remember dr hedo because it's just going to kind of happen in the background and he's going to be watching them fight off his creations and whatnot. He's going to see that, and he's going to be like, Ooh, superheroes. Ooh, those look like awesome outfits. And he's going to take those designs, and he's going to make it into Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. I 100% promise you, right now, this is what's happening. Okay? <laughs> I, I don't understand the negativity in, in this whole prequel business, but this is dumb. This is dumb right here. The... the it's gonna be great. Uh, totally, all of his point. This should be anime. Uh, to okay, so if y'all don't like filler, then don't just say it. Okay, it, it's not filler though. There's a lot of unexplored stories we've more than mentioned here. So it's been universe 13 to 18 group. Still dealing with three. It's good if they're plant. Uh, I don't get it when people say movie manga will be separate. Okay. Anyways, I, I enjoy Dragon Ball Super Chronicles. Uh, input on a lot of uh <laughs> of uh manga and anime points i very much appreciate that he releases all of this and he gets we get his input i completely disagree with him on all of, of the uh the uh slice of life and so forth 
there's there's a lot of things that they're going to be bringing forward. Um, I was gonna go over a couple things with Seven Star. He's a, he's kind of a uh, he's not super big in the community, but he he has a lot of decent uh, head cannon and knowledge. So I do like to look at his input on some of these. Uh, they were planning on taking a break from large scale stakes battles with Gokunvisha and instead putting more focus on other characters like Trunks and local scale even before Super was a thing. Um, yeah, they, they they were. And I'm really glad because it needs a break. I'll be honest here, I'm exhausted and bored of the Granola arc. The Granola arc was very boring to me. Maybe if I had read it all at once in continuation, it would have been fine. But considering how much it's been separated, it, the, it just felt really dull and dragged out excessively. I did not like it. Um, I want to see what Geekdom101 ha has said. He actually posted 12 hours ago when, the, when this all went up. He said he can't upload at the moment, but there are some notes from Tori Ataro's interview this morning. Um, so he's planned on Frieza to return at the end of the gra uh, Granola arc as a hidden character. I, uh, yeah. I mean, that's good. I would hope they would, and they weren't just bullcrapping it the whole way. He wanted to make it impactful. The name was derived from a black credit card ahead of a gold one. It was Taryatara and Victory Achia's idea to color him black. Okay, that's that's fine. That's true. When it comes to the superhero manga arc, he met under Toriyama's disgust, making a smaller and simple story on Earth, Goku and Vegeta taking a back seat to other characters. I mean, that's good. Yep. Toriyatara reveals that he wanted to do a story about Trunks years before the superhero movie was greenlit. Yep. He submitted several variations of the story arc before accepting accepted to make what it is now. Confirmed a romance between Trunks and Mai in the current story arc. So, yes and no. He says that they want to have more rom-com moments. Just because it is set of rom-comedy moments doesn't mean they're going to actually keep the romance. Obviously, I, I, I agree, they probably will, but it doesn't mean that they're, it's confirmed that they're going to force them together. As of right now, I 100% am saying Mai is not interested, so we're at least getting build-up of it. So, uh, not a big fan of it. There is no reason to not be a big fan of it. I've, I've said it before in another video. Mai, yes, is a teenager. Yes, she used to be older. Yes, technically Mai is like 60 or 70 years old. She downgraded her age. She she went right back down to being a child and is growing up again. I'm going to tell you right now, 99% of being an adult is literally having to do adult things. If you're a teenager and you act like a teenager and you're able to be a teenager, you're a teenager. You might have a little bit more wisdom, but it doesn't mean you're a freaking adult. It's not creepy. It's not weird. If she returns to her original age, yes, it's creepy. But also, I think if she returns to her original age at this point, she would die instantly and turn into dust. So, can we please get over the mentality thing? It's it's a mentality. Chill out, okay? <laughs> um, Tario Tario loves the characters of Dr. Hedo and Orange Piccolo and Gold Beast. I would hope so. They're probably the most interesting things to come out of the, the movie and recent anything. Uh, Tario Tario remarks that he missed drawing normal humans rather than the aliens and, hum and Saiyans. I mean, I imagine, I imagine aliens and Saiyans get very exhausting. I mean, Saiyans are all, he basically draws all the Saiyans virtually the same as a base model and all of the aliens are probably just kind of exhausting. Um, so I, I imagine, yeah, he does miss drawing normal things. Uh, let's see here. He also says more info about Dr. Rose disc revealed next chapter and uh, how Edo wound up arrested part two next week yeah so that's the summarization of that whole interview right here i do once again i do want to go through this whole video i'm not going to because like i said for some other reason tohi and bandai love to mark my freaking videos and get them uh, copyright claimed every time i get into these things but the general has been said over the video uh to summarize what I think is going to happen, 100% we are going to see in the next chapter uh, what is on the Dr. Jiro disc. And I have a feeling it's going to be old variations of Cell and his second form. And it looks like it'll probably have a lead up of to his perfect quote unquote form. And then Dr. Hedo says, I can't decrypt the data or it's damaged or something like that is going to happen. 
Um, and I also am calling it right now that Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are based off of Goten and Trunks in their X1 and X2 superhero forms. Calling that right now, 100%. Um, and as far as Black Frieza goes, that is not his final form. It is not. There is no level above Black on a credit card. I don't care if that's what he's base. He's they're basing his new forms off of. But I 100% I promise you, there is a perfected uh, Black Frieza form, or there is going to be a final form, cooler esque form. <laughs> that's what my assumption is going to be with Frieza. But I uh, also believe that. Frieza's entire arc is going to be excessively dragged out, and it'll be interesting, but I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things that Dragon Ball manga can go over and go into, and I'm not really sure what they'll do after Frieza, but they got to get to the end of Z at some point, man. We're, we're literally on the precipice. We're at the literal precipice of it, and they're really trying to get around it as much as possible, but... Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the new interview with Toyotaro. What is your opinions on Black Frieza and Great Sam and X1 and X2 and Dr. Hedo? And do you approve of the mashing of romance with Trunks and Mai? Do you think that's okay or do you think it's freaking weird? Personally, I don't think it is. I, I think people are overreacting. She's a teenager now with a little maturity. That's how I view her. Oh. Anyways, guys, have a good day and a good night.